Hey EDF fans, welcome back. Today's video is going to focus on working with evolving schemas in your ETL when using Azure SQL Database. So we're going to use Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows to handle those database evolving schemas. All right, let's get started. I have a blank canvas on my screen. This is the data flow canvas. And before I start painting on here, I want to show you first the database, very simple table that I'm going to be using from Azure SQL Database. Let me go to my management studio. And in my management studio, I have this very simple schema called demo table. Yes, it's called demo table. So if I do a select star, see that I have one, four, five, six columns, some data in them. Uh, it's some, it came from my movies data uh, set and I had my previous video I had created some data that is doing some aggregations doing an average rating it's kind of uh, an average rating without a rounding on it. it's kind of an ugly number we can fix it up and maybe play with an evolving schema by adding another column that has a, a more formatted output from the average rating anyway the bottom line to it is it's called demo table and this is the schema that it has so let's start fundamentally within data flows uh, when working with ETL for Azure SQL database now if you were to just work with that database table as it is and you have the understanding that for your ETL process that table the columns may evolve may change over time a way to handle that in data flow is this way let's start by adding a source and we're going to add a new source and this source is going to have a we'll do a new data set for this so I'm not going to select an existing data set I'm going to select a new data set which is going to be an Azure SQL database data sets and so I called it demo table. So let's go ahead and call this demo table. Let's do that SQL database, but link service is very easy to set up. Now just have your credentials for the connection to that data source. The table name is demo table. So let's look for it from the search from the metadata database. Now, because what's important is because we believe that this schema can change, I'm not going to use a hardened uh, schema. So we call this late binding. If you were to do early binding with data flow, you would say, go ahead and, and give me the schema. Actually, let me show you that. So if you just leave this data import schema, the schema API will be called for this data set that's being created. And on that data set, if you click open on it, you'll see that under schema, there is a schema there. And that schema is coming from that database and it's using the data set types of the data factory which are dotnet types but we're in data flow and data flow is a spark technology and so what happens is the projection then the projection of that physical schema gets translated into spark types and because i believe that the schema can change and evolve over time i don't want the schema so what i will do is back on that data set the demo table data set let me just take that schema and clear it I don't need the schema because it's going to evolve, all right? So back on my data flow, what I will do is I'll come in and see the projection is now empty, which is great. I actually want that. This is what I want. Now let me show you a simple syncing of these columns and we'll worry about the uh, transformations between and how you work with transformations when you have evolving schema and you're using these kinds of schemaless or late binding data flows. So set a sync onto the end here. Now I'm just going to sync right back into uh, that same database table okay so i'm going to use that same data set of um, demo table this will be just this will be just fine now notice i have schema drift on schema drift is the built-in facility within dataflow to handle these sort of situations both on the source under settings as well as here on the sync i have allow schema drift set i am not validating the schema because I believe the schema to, uh, I want the schema to be flexible and to evolve. So it's flexible schema, so allow schema drift, no validate schema. And then the important thing as well is on the mapping. So I'm not going to map field by field, and I can't anyway because there is no schema. So just say auto map, and this will just tell data flow, say when data factory runs this pipeline, just go ahead and map the incoming field to the outgoing. All right, so this will work just fine. Let's go ahead and let's prove that out just by testing this. Now remember, when you're in data preview, the debug mode with side of your data flow, canvas this does not write any data but this will tell you what's going to be written when you actually execute this to act to actually write this data we have to go over to a pipeline and add that data flow the evolving schema data flow so it's selected right here and this will uh, execute then using this uh, debug cluster that I have set from my Azure integration runtime. Now, before we do that, let's go back and let's see what we get for the data. So the data is going to be essentially doubling the data. All right, so let's go ahead and let's confirm that I do. So back over on my management studio, let's get accounts of the rows from demo table. The data is gonna be duplicated and so it's easier to see just from the count that we're actually, uh, this process is actually working. 
And we see that there are 945 rows. Okay, great. So we're going to take those coming in and we're going to put them back out. So we're going to duplicate. We're going to insert. Just do an insert. When you are uh, using a sync of a database type here within data factories, data flows, the default is that allows inserts. If you want to do delete, upsert, and update, you must add an alter row transformation. First, tag the rows appropriately and set the primary key to match those. So let's just leave it as this. We're going to insert. All right. So to do the actual insert, we have to go over to a pipeline and execute this. I can run it from debug. So it uses that debug cluster, which is already warm and running. And so this should be fairly quick. This should probably run in about 45 seconds. Uh, let's go back over here and let's see if we're getting any of the rows coming in. Uh, yes. Let's pause for a second, a couple of seconds and come right back. Okay, so we're about 30 seconds in and it looks like we have the rows and I think that's the process should be completed it is it took 34 seconds. Okay, great. So we got the rows duplicated now. So uh, let's actually just do a quick select just to take a look at the data and everything is just going to be duplicated. Okay, so everything works just fine. The data types are there, the columns are all there, and the rows are all there. So I, all I needed to do to do that was to just specify the source and sync table name. No schema. This is schema lesson. It works just fine. The magic is the uh, auto mapping for this. The uh, flexible schema using the schema drift feature is going to come into play in just a minute as I talk more about that. So auto mapping is the key here. Okay, now let's say that the schema changes. Let's go ahead and change the schema on this table. Let's add in another one. So I talked about average rating being a little bit ugly. It wasn't formatted. So let's do this. Let's alter the table. So we're going to alter a demo table. Let's add a column. We'll add it. We'll call it um, formatted average rating like that. There we go. Formatted average rating. I'm going to use some string formatting on that. So I'm going to make this a, an nvarchar I'll just set it for a 10 just for that. Uh, and that should be good. Okay, so now we have altered the schema for the uh, demo table. Let's go ahead and let's just make sure that we have all this here on our Android Studio so we can watch this. Then we have an extra column. We do a select, and those, of course, all being the new column, are all going to be nulls. That's fine. I don't need to change anything. I'm good to go. Uh, my my uh, data flow will work just fine. Now, with I can do to show you a little bit more than just duplicating this data again is let's do this. Let's actually create a value for that formatted, nicely formatted column. So I'm going to add a derived column in here. Derived column is how you make new columns or modify existing columns in data factory. So remember, we have no schema. So if I look at the inspect metadata tab, I see nothing. This is all schema less. This is late binding. So I have to use column patterns. So I'm going to change over to column patterns. I'm going to remove my exact column, derived column. And let's first thing you have to do is you have to put a matching condition. So the matching condition is going to be I want to create a value for that column. So we're going to use the special keyword within Data Factory's data flow uh, called name. That'll look for a column name of whatever name that you put in here. So we want to find the rating, the ugly rating, average rating spelled out. So it's like this, average rating. So what this will do is this will say, anytime you see this column, activate this rule down here. This rule is going to be fill in the formatted average rating column with this formula. And the formula is going to be to take the column which is dollar dollar is this, which is this incoming column, which, which is average rating. Take that, round it, and we actually also want to convert that to a string. So let's say two string. Actually, let's do this. Let's round it to two places like that. And then we'll say two string of that rounding like that. And now we're going to have a uh, string column called formatted average rating. Let's do a data preview just to take a look at our results. While that's uh, cooking, let me quick walk you through again what this is doing. This is saying, Data Factory, when you're running this data flow and you see a column that's named average rating, remember we have to do this because we have no metadata. This is late binding schema -less. Create a new column called formatted average rating, which matches the name I created in my alter table on my database table, and fill it in with this formula, which is rounding the average rating to two places and then converting that to a string. So I get a string. Remember, I created this column as an nvar chart 10. So we look at the data preview and we should see the nice new formatted field called formatted rating. And that looks beautiful to me. That's great. And that's it. So I don't need to change again. This is evolving schema. So this is all we're almost ready to run, except for that. Remember on the sync, our settings is 
uh, set for insert. I don't want to insert, I want to update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do an update command. And to do the update, you have to use an alter row. So alter row allows you to define the policies that define the different or different types of actions you would perform on your target database. So we're going to do an update. And I'm going to update everything because I'm creating a brand new co uh, column value for every row. I'm just going to say true, so my condition is going to be true. And then on the sync, I'm saying don't insert, don't duplicate those rows again. Just exponentially grow those rows. Let's just do not an upsert, let's just do an update. Now the important thing is here, you have to set a key. I do not have, if you look at my data set, I do not have a key column. But I'm going to just kind of do a, a little bit of a um, assumption. I'm going to assume that the first three columns combined together as a composite key will be good enough for my uh, for my uniqueness. In real life, you're going to want to have actually use a unique value, but this will at least show you how you can have composite keys. So let's take those three columns and let's make them into the composite key. Now remember, I, I have no schema, so how do I do that? Well, I use dynamic content. Dynamic content will look for those column names from that destination. So I can say, what do I have? I've got primary genre. So I just type in primary genre as it appears in that database within quotes. So that is the string name for that column. The other one is year. Oops, here this is dynamic content. This is all schema drift land. This is all late binding. This is what you have to do now. You're gonna be using this, for, this technique. And then average rating is the third key column. And I did it again. That's what I'm gonna use for my uniqueness. All right, everything else is good to go. Uh, actually, we can preview this and you will see that it'll indicate that each column or each row is now going to be flagged for update and it's going to update it with that new column value. So what we have today of all these nulls is we'll all get the values with my fingers crossed that this uniqueness is going to be um, good enough um, to get the right value in there. And there you see is uh, the new column value. So now we can execute this and look at our results. I'll go back over to the pipeline. We can click debug to actually write the rows. Let's give that a couple of seconds to cook, and I'll come back in about some 30 seconds to see our results are. Okay, we're back. I do a select star again, and you see that we now have the formatted average rating filled in for each row. And so I did not need to make any changes, or I will not need to make any changes to my data flow. It took 34 seconds to run because everything is schemaless. It is late binding. And it's based on patterns. And so as your uh, schema evolves in your databases, the key is to have a data set that does not have the schema in it, no projection in the source of the sync, and to use the auto mapping feature with the schema drift. Auto mapping, schema drift, which is right here. And when you're using derived columns, to use the pattern. And then when you are updating your rows, is to make sure that you have set the key columns based on the names inside of the destination like this using the dynamic content. Thanks for watching.